Well, it's, um, it's early morning in Abuja and in this street. This, Slowly, this, yeah, this, street, this street is calm. Oh, okay. So, um, this chart of demands has been posted uh, virtually, I mean, online. Several people have seen several perspectives of it. But today is a day which they've talked about. Yes, we need to hit the streets. And the build up is several descriptions about all of this build up. As a matter of fact, I mean, we just finished that. <laughs> have we even finished the minimum, taking in one way <laughs> now with the minimum wage and then this one? So, talk to us about what you think of all of this back and forth of for, just for this day in the first instance you know for for us um uh, first um, the the presidents of the organized private sector of nigeria comprising man neka nasima nasmi and nasi um, uh, early in the week and um, released a statement uh, to also affirm that look uh, the rights for peaceful gathering is, is a shrine and that seems to be a consensus but for us you know the, the issue remains the, um, the potential for peaceful protest to turn into something else. And for organized businesses from our recent experience in 2020, uh, during the NSAS, when the, the protest, uh, peaceful, seemingly, seemingly peaceful and organized uh, gathering was, um, was hijacked, the organized businesses lost close to a trillion naira. You know, and those businesses, the businesses that probably uh, were basically surviving on loans, on credits. And it created a lot of um, disconnection for organized businesses. So, uh, an adage in my place said, if if um, if they've used knife, uh, if you've been you've been injured with a knife before, next time you see somebody um, dangling a knife, you you be more apper sensitive within the context of your reaction. So that is the position of organized private sector. Now concerning um, what has happened and what is happening today, I think what we have learned, and I think we mentioned this, we stated this at the beginning of the um, this administration. That there is need for us to continue to build consensus. You know, the level of level of engagement we have seen in the last one week is quite unprecedented. Level of engagement with critical stakeholders, with youth organisations, with the business committee, with everybody. You know, government at all levels came out and they keep engaging, and that is what we feel. Look, reforms are not they are not they are not easy. They come with some level of sacrifices that citizens will have to make. But those citizens have to be carried along. They need to be engaged constructively in those things. So for us, the positive of it is the level of engagement we have seen in the last one week so, has been quite unprecedented. And we hope do, that we continue. Does it then tell us, because there are those who think, wait a minute, is it that government has no way of getting fillers as to the impact or whatever it is that they were doing? Because if this, not a lot of people even knew about this planned protest until government began talking about it, different yeah. agencies. So mm -hmm. they got the message before several other people. Mm -hmm. So if they could get the message at the point, what then was it? How come they didn't get the fillers that looks, whatever policies you may say you're putting in place may not be achieving its desired objective? Well, well, without speaking for government, I believe the Minister for Information or Minister for Communication will do, will do better than much more than I will ever do within the context of responding to that um, to that question. But it, it's quite valid, really, that um, things are, um, organized businesses have raised concerns, individuals have raised concerns, and somehow government, the government's response, even while government is taking action, you know, we must commend that certain steps have been taken, um, the issue of the CNG buses, some reliefs here and there. But it's one thing for you to do to intervene it's one thing for you to communicate those interventions to the citizens. Yeah. So communication seems to be a, a, a gap that we hope the government will fill subsequently, arising from the experience that we have concerning this, um, this very wonderful August. Mm. Mm, communication, indeed. I mean, I, I'm look, looking at the uh, demands of the protesters as posted online. I mean, this is how we've seen them. It's still not very... We've seen a few names. It's interesting how you even see uh, judgments. When you see court judgments, you mm -hmm. see things like unknown persons. Persons unknown uh, are, are added as defendants. <laughs> that, that's how, you know, unclear, apart from a few lawyers, very known lawyers, yeah. you know, reputable lawyers who have, you know, come out to say they're Absolutely. lawyers to the protesters. It's not very clear who the people that are protesting are. However... Um, or who are leaders of this protest. But taking a look at some of the things that they are asking for, I don't know if you've, 
You've seen uh, the demand so far. Have you taken? Have you seen a look? I've seen it. We've gleaned a bit of it. You've gleaned a bit of yeah, it. Yeah, but we don't know where this where the source is coming. As you said, so many unknown them. Um, Unknown personalities behind it. So. <laughs> yes, but I'm I'm looking at it and I'm wondering how feasible. Assuming, because sometimes you know, if this were like an NLC protest, for instance, when you look at this demand, you know that we're in for a long haul. Um, I'm taking a look at it and I'm wondering how how will government engage to get this level to to even say where will be the where will be the negotiation point? Right. Where will be the middle ground in, in this? Because we know that a lot of people will come from one end, governments will come from another end, yeah. and they're supposed to meet at the middle somewhere. I'm looking at this. Scrap the 1999 constitution <laughs> and replace it with a people-made constitution. Toss the Senate arm of the Nigerian legislative system. Pay Nigerian workers a minimum wage of nothing less than 250,000 naira. Invest help, and we just finished minimum wage negotiations. So absolutely. there'll be questions as to uh, where is this coming from now. Invest heavily in education and give Nigerian students grants, not loans. Aggressively pursue free and compulsory education for children across Nigeria. Now, some people will say perhaps number four, we can begin to take a look at that. But the first three. How feasible do you think these, these demands are? I, I would rather say they are desirable. You know, there is a wide gap between desirability and, um, and whether they are visible within the context of now. But if those demands, if they, if they, if they kickstart or they bring us back to a retrospection point mm -hmm. where we start asking ourselves, okay, do we really need this? Um, I can't remember anywhere in the world, as I'm sitting here, where you have free education, you know, mm. be, be beyond probably the nursery, um, the, 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 the primary, in some instances, the secondary, the secondary level. Um, education is not cheap, as it were. Um, the 1999 constitution, if you want to change it, it takes a bit of time, a bit of process before you do that. But maybe this will just um, bring us back to a point of um, introspection. Does, okay, do we really need this? where we start questioning certain things that we've taken for granted over time. Um, the bicameral legislation, there have been instances in time past where some have canvassed that we need the unicameral the kind of legislation. Do we have to talk about it now? Um, so those demands, you mentioned the issue of the minimum wage. Um, the president have signed uh, the new minimum wage act uh, magnanimously, and it seems to be, organized labor seems to be content and happy with it. And organized private, uh, organized private sector also seems to be content and happy with it. So where that is coming from, uh, we, we really... We really magnanimously, though. I mean, some people will say, Ma what is magnanimous <laughs> about that? And isn't that what sh should happen in the face of rising cost of living? Well, if, if you look at the rising cost of living, then you, you, also look, you, have to also look, you have to also have to look at this, the other side of it, the rising cost of doing business. So if 70 is is good for, for the employee, then mm -hmm. is 70 good for the employers. Mm -hmm. So you have to balance that equation. Mm. All right.